Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be in Leviticus chapter 18. I'm looking at verse number 4 and 5, but I'm going to save it to the end. I'm not going to read it first. Um, and this is another, um, as the book of Leviticus is, it, it can be very like ugh, intense. Um, and this is another one of those chapters that's just very intense. Um, but it's important in every, every book in the Bible Every verse, every jot, every tittle is important. Every and, but, therefore, um, every punctuation. It's amazing to me how punctuation makes a difference. You can read a sentence and, and read it as if it has no commas, no pauses, and it will read different. But once you put that pause in there, um, it makes you stop. Um, and it changes it for you. So everything is important, even the difficult subjects to talk about, the difficult subjects to think about. I mean, when you're reading some of this, um, it's really disgusting the, um, that God has to even deal with this, that God has to even put this out there as something that we need to uh, refrain from. It's really, really hard to comprehend that this was ever even an issue, but as in life, um, there's so much that's put out there that are, people are trying to say, this is okay, and they're trying to get us accustomed to things, and they want us to get used to seeing things so that we don't think it's disgusting, that we don't think that this is immorally wrong, but God says that there are things that are morally wrong for me and for you. And that does not just apply to our young people. And I feel like that I notice such a trend. Um, and, you know, it's, it's always being on the young people about everything. It's not just about the young people. This applies to any age group. This is not just if you're 16 or if you're 26 or if you're 76 or beyond, this applies to every person, no matter what the age, that we are to maintain a moral standard that God has set. It's not my idea. Um, I'm seeing in here and I'm like, I'm so glad that, you know, God has set a standard because this is just, some of this is just absolutely disgusting. But obviously there's an issue obviously there are problems because god's the one who knows god sees all he knows all um and he has set some standards for me and for you um just like here with the israelites these are the group they have been they have been removed from bondage back in, in egypt and god has has brought them out and just like that where they were physically brought out of bondage they were slaves in egypt they had um you know taskmaster masters and and somebody telling them what to do when to do uh, you know beatings and i mean just they were they were in bondage literally in bondage and god removed them from that bondage and he's like okay now I know you've seen some things. I know you've experienced some things, but I want to tell you that there are some things that are ceremonially wrong. And he had, he wants to di differentiate between, um, you know, the Gentiles and the Jews. That's what he's, he's trying to create some separation. He wants it when, and when we've been saved, it's been, it's been the same experience that I was, um, I was, you know, the chains were removed. The, the bonds of sin were removed. That weight that was so heavy on me that night that I was saved. I was saved on a Monday night. That night that I was saved, the bondage, the 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 it was lifted, and I even like like I knew it happened that I was even able to stand, and it was like everything was different from that day forward. God saying, "I am the Lord, and I've done this. I've done this for you, but I do have some things I want you to." I want you to think different. I want you to do to to act differently. I want you to talk differently. I want you to respond different. He's got all these things that he wants us to grow and do, um, and he's got some moral standards that he has set for us. And it's be so wonderful if people would get back to the moral standards that God has set. Because even in the Christian realm, this is not just in out in the world. This, even in the Christian realm, that you will see churches and you will see you will hear other christians that are saying well this okay you know that's all right you know god understands no he doesn't 
he's saying, he, he drew some lines in the sand and he's saying, this is what is acceptable. And this is where you're going to be most happy, most content, most safe, living your best life. That's what everybody wants. They want to live their best life. And we can't live our best life outside of God's boundaries, outside of his judgments, his ordinance, his parameters, his statutes, when we're within those. And we'll get to that in a little bit when we, when we, are, when we are actually living those out, walking in them. We're going to find that that is the absolute best life that we could have. So as he's reminding us that, yes, the Jews, the Israelites, they were, they were removed out of bondage. Let us use this as an example for the, own bond, for the bondage that we were in before salvation. But since salvation, since we're saved, if, you're, if you know Jesus personally as your Savior, if his blood has been applied to your life and he, you have accepted his free gift, then God is saying, I am, the, I am the Lord, I am your God, and I've got some wonderful things for you. It's going to feel restricted, maybe. It's going to feel uncomfortable, maybe. Maybe you have to stop doing some things or start doing some other things or whatever, but I'm going to teach you and train you and mold you and shape you, and you're going to live your best life. Is it going to mean that you know, some, that everything's going to be perfect? No, because we're living in a sinful world. Everything's not perfect. There's still going to be stuff out here. There's still going to be, you know, bad things that happen. And, but if we were, if we are abiding in God's judgments, his ordinances, his statutes, oh my word, the best potential to have here on earth, that, that we can live it out while we're here. And then perfection is going to be achieved one day when we're no longer here, when we're in heaven. We get to experience perfection. God is going to bring us around to that. But in the midst of all of this stuff that goes on in the world, we can still live our best life. The best life possible is the ones that God has created for us by walking in his, his judgments, his ordinances, and his statutes. Now, Saying all that, um, true freedom is experienced at salvation and continuing to walk in that true freedom, that true contentment, that overwhelming joy. I woke up with overwhelming joy this morning and I can't even tell you specifically why other than I know yesterday God told me to set aside some something, something in particular that I was, you know, really wasn't thinking about. Um, but he showed me something um, that he wanted me to set aside, and I did it. And this morning, I feel like he has just blessed me with this overwhelming joy that I just can't hardly contain it. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. I just about heart can't hardly contain myself. I have such, um, I have such uh, energy, and it's 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 gratitude, and it's. You know, it's just pure love for the Lord because I'm experiencing his love. So don't think about rules and regulations like, like, oh, this is so terrible. No, it's freedom. It's true, overwhelming joy and freedom. And every time that we submit to whatever God has for us, then we're going to experience that. And it's not even going to be, it's going to be something you have a hard time even putting into words. But here at the end of the devotion, I want to get to the scripture. I want to look at verse number four and verse number five, and we'll break it down just a little bit. But you're going to, you're, you're, I want you to, I want you reading the whole chapter of Leviticus 18. It is overwhelming, but don't let that overwhelm you. Stop and get the nuggets that, that he has for you. Stop and get those treasures that are in his word, even if you have to read through some difficult things. There may be something in there that um, thinks like, well, I'm not doing any of that, but you have to be careful because if you're not careful, then your thought pattern, then your life pattern, um, like I said, it doesn't matter if we're 16 anymore. Um, I'm 52 years old. Um, if my husband were to pass today, I would I would still need to abide by the sexual moral conduct that God has set aside for me. And that is talking that is speaking about not having sex outside of marriage, not and being morally um correct according to God's judgments, ordinance and standards and and uh what he wants for us. 
uh, you know, I would still be, I would still be bound to that. When you are in a marriage and you are thinking about looking outside your marriage, that's morally wrong. God is saying, no, I've got better for you. I've got better for you. If you're in a hard patch, get work through it. Don't think that, oh, well, you know, well, we just don't love each other anymore. <sighs> Respect the Lord enough to say, you know what, Lord, you're the Lord. And we can work through this. We can get through this. I know Todd and I had a rough patch um, about, I don't know, probably about 18 years into our marriage. And it was just some, some things that we were, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, that I didn't love my husband. It was that I was, I was so upset over some things and I needed to, to, I needed to forgive him of some things and he needed to, um, submit to the Lord in some things and we worked through it. And ultimately, I mean, we're, we'll be celebrating 30 years in November. We've been together for 31 years, 30 years of marriage in November. And I'll tell you that today I love my husband more. And it just encourages me that it could get even better and better and better with age, with time, with growing, with as the Lord is helping me with being forgiving and, you know, not holding grudges and not taking revenge, which was issues that I really, really had issues with. Um, being content, which he's still working on me with that one. I'm still trying to be content with, you know, as I wait on the Lord about some circumstances and and uh, some different things. But then at the same time, God, I have saw, I have seen God completely transform my husband to the point where I'm like, I am so shocked and amazed and that I could love somebody more and more and more that the capacity to love is, is so there. But even if the Lord was to take him before, you know, before me, then if I'm left behind, I'm still to have moral sexual standards that God has set for me. And it's not restriction, but it's freedom. It's freedom. Let's read verse number four and verse number five. And it says, Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. This is personal. If you know him, this is personal. Um, he's the Lord. He's the one. He's our creator. He's self-existent. Um, he didn't need anybody. He was, he's our Alpha, our Omega, um, and he's our God, which means he's our judge, which means he's the one who has laid out the law. And when he talks about here, you shall do my judgments, those are, that's the verdict that he has, has put forth. That is, he has made the decision. Think of that judge sitting at the, um, at, a, at his desk and he's rendered, um, the case closed. He is, he is rendered, you know, this is the verdict. This is how it's going to be. And we have to abide by those. And I know that um, a lot of times as a Christian, and God does give us free will to submit or to retaliate and rebel. But the more we submit, the more freedom that we experience. And it says here, um, and so we, we know what his judgments are, and keep my ordinances um, this ordinances are is I like the word when I looked it up. It said pres to prescribe. This is what he prescribes for us to have this freedom, this contentment, this overwhelming joy, living our best life. He is prescribing some things. So don't look at this whole thing and think, oh, this is some intense, um, you know, situations here, and they are. But this is his prescription. And he's got this out there for a reason and don't miss it because if we're not careful, we'll think, well, what we do isn't so bad because that is horrible. Well, it's all horrible. And he's set these, um, he's prescribed these ordinances or prescription boundaries so that we can have that joy unspeakable and full of glory and we can have that peace that passes all understanding and we can we can live out our best life while we're here and then it just gets better when we um leave this world and we're we're with jesus and we're in heaven so um he set out those one to walk there and this is the way we are to conduct our life to walk there in this is how we carry out we are to submit 
and carry out. No matter what thought runs through your mind, no matter what society says is okay, no matter what even other Christians say, well, it's okay. Y'all need to get to know each other before you decide if you need to be married or not. Well, it's okay. You know, you just need some companionship. You're lonely or you're not getting, you know, you're not getting what you need from your spouse. So you can go outside of that. No, absolutely not. It's for, this is what he is set for, and he intends on us to carry it out. Even if you run through some hard years together, or if you're, or if you're lonely, there is no better companion while you're lonely than that relationship with Jesus Christ. He is everything that you need. He is everything that I need. And even in those times where you're lonely and you're missing that companionship, that's when you seek him out more and you walk with him more and that he's going to give you that that you need. Um, and so he wants us to walk therein. He wants us to um, actually live this Christian life out and he wants us to do it according to the what the verdict that he's laid down according to the prescription that he's prescribed, then he wants us to simply submit to carry it out. Verse number uh, five, and this is, and he says, therein I am the Lord your God. He's like, you're going to do all this because I am the Lord your God. He is my God. And so I want to submit. I want, I know, I know he's got all the perfect answers. In verse number five, this is where we're going to close. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, this is what I've been talking about the whole time, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. He shall live. This is going to save your life. This is going to revive your life. This is going to sustain your life. This is going to restore life. This is how you live your best life while we're here. And the more that we submit to him, um, and re realize he, no matter what he's asking you to submit to, I am the Lord. I am the Lord, he says. And he says that he is my God, that he is your God. And that's personal. That's that personal walk with you. And the more we walk it out, the more we carry it out, the more that we accept the prescription. There are so many people that will get a prescription and they're like, I'm not taking this prescription. And I understand it. I get it. If a doctor's prescribing some things, I'm going to call into question some things. But if God's prescribing it, we don't need to call it into question. We don't need to consider, well, I'm, I, we, don't need to, we don't need to act like we have a choice. We just need to submit. And we don't always want to. But the, by trusting him and when we follow through, he's saying that, that if a man do, he's like, if you'll do it. And ladies, this is not just for the men. This is for the ladies because this is not just a man problem. This is a person problem that any of us can fall into this. Any of this could be a part of, you know, some thinking that needs to be removed. You know, this is for mankind. Every man and woman, if they will do this, he shall live in them I am the Lord. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.